walking through my dining room and my dining room at the time my father used to have a briefcase that sat in the dining room against like the radiator or close by the radiator in the window i'm as i'm talking i'm picturing my house my old house in my mind and i used to see this briefcase i don't know how many times my little 10 year old self maybe even nine year old self walked by that briefcase it sat in the same place all the time i never pay when i tell you i ain't never paid no attention of like when i say pay attention i mean wanted to, or ever been curious or wanted to know what was in it until this day some blowing in the background that's the air um i have to keep my windows up it's a beautiful day outside but i have to keep my windows up because they don't rope they don't go down <laughs> don't judge me but it's all good big red is what me and my husband call her she has been with us especially me because i had her before i before i got married to my husband um had her for a long time and she has hung in there with us as you get i know y'all be seeing the tape on the window again don't judge okay but anyway this ain't about this ain't about that um serious note um uh this story time is about um when i was first introduced to pornography and how i got addicted to it for many many years i'm not saying i'm super super old i'm only 45 but i was addicted to it for a long long time way longer than i should have been um not proud of it but i am proud to say that i am delivered from it and that um i am no longer addicted anymore and so but this is my story so um i was 10 10 i was going to say 11 no i was 10. i was 10 years old this was a summer uh this was, this was the summer of 89 i was 10 years old and um my mom <clears throat> asked me so back in the day I, I don't know if they still had these now but back in the day they used to have these um gar garment it looks like a, a it looks like a, a a portable garment bag and I, I don't know how i don't know what they're called but you put okay you know what a regular garment bag looks like right with the zipper and that you put your um your outfits and stuff in it you don't want to get wrinkled when you're traveling and stuff like that that folds over this one you could you could use like a closet and you could sit it's still zipped but you could uh position it and then it had a bar and you know you could hang stuff like that i do not know what that's called but that's what my father had and it was in the basement and his clothes that were, i guess whatever couldn't fit in their closet in the bedroom i hope y'all can see me because the sun is sunny today <laughs> um Whatever they could, my, my father couldn't fit in, in in their closet upstairs. His extra was down there. Um, I don't know. I didn't pay much attention to it until this one day that my mom asked me to go and get something out of his garment closet bag. That's what we're going to call it, okay? If anybody knows what that's called, put it in the comments. Um, and so I ran downstairs to the basement, <clears throat> in the basement, to go get what she asked me to get. And... Um, I unzipped it and opened it and it was a, a brown paper bag at the bottom and there was a magazine literally right up at the top now how did I know it was at the top I remember at the top because what she asked me to get wasn't in the bag <clears throat> and so there would have been no reason for me to go in the bag but since the magazine was at the top my eyes drew right to the magazine naturally so I do not know if they even still have this magazine. I'm pretty sure they do. But the magazine is called Hustler. And it is a pornographic magazine. And I saw it. And of course, uh, the on the front is what drew me more other than the name. Because if it was just the name, I really wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. The What was on the front was a naked woman. And uh, I'm pretty sure, I believe it was just the top part. But nonetheless, it was a naked woman. And I picked up the magazine and I began to go through it. I, um, no, 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 no. Scratch that. No, I didn't. Not then. Not at that point. I ran upstairs 
I don't even remember if I grabbed what my mom asked me to grab, but I ran upstairs and, and tattled and told her my father. My mother was sitting there talking to my uh sister, and I said, Mom, I said, Mom, Mom, Daddy got a dirty magazine downstairs. And my mother just laughed it off, and she was like, oh, Lord. That's exactly what she said. And um, went on about her business. And I was actually shocked at her response because I thought she would be upset. You know, I was assuming my 10 year old self and because I knew if it was down there in a stash, even my 10 year old self knew that apparently it was being hidden. You know, whether it was hidden from me or hidden from her, it was being hidden. So. <laughs> You know, my 10 year old self is thinking that obviously is, is wrong. So I was thinking that she would be upset and she was just like, oh Lord, and that was it. And she went on about her business. <clears throat> and then um, I went back downstairs. <laughs> I went back downstairs and pulled that magazine out and sat down there and began to go through it. I heard my mom could maybe 10, 15 minutes later yell my name and it scared me, I jumped. And um, she said, you ain't down there looking at that magazine. I said, no, ma'am. I lied. And um, I think I said, no, ma'am, I'm playing the game or something like that. And she said, um, she was like, okay. And then she said, her and my sister will get ready to go to the store. And they'll be back. And I said, okay. And so my mom at, yes, at 10, I was very mature back then. And it was that, it was that year, as a matter of fact, that she started leaving me home. Um you know when, when when she had to run errands and stuff like that she, I, because she knew my, I was a responsible child and she knew I wasn't gonna get into stuff and stuff like that so I had stopped um she stopped sending me to the babysitter and stuff like that is what I'm saying but um plus they weren't gonna be gone long or whatever but you know my 10 year old self was happy because I really wanted I, I, the seed was planted see this the seed was planted okay which is the magazine <clears throat> and then the curiosity now so if you've been, I, you know what, I forgot, I'm so sorry. I forgot, I just, I went right into it. I forgot to introduce myself. I forgot to welcome my, uh, my, my subscribers back. Hi, I am Tara Walker. Um, this is, welcome to Receive and Relate if you are here for the first time. Glad you are here. If you are a returning subscriber, hey y'all, hey. Um, now, I have been sharing my stories um I, I just shared one where i was eight what happened when i was eight with another with a young lady and then some months ago i shared the first time i was molested by a little boy at six years old so the reason why i said that is because now i'm 10 so if you've been following along on my journey um you know now that i've already been molested uh by a boy and a girl so the sin sin has now dropped into me already and so now now my curiosity is like running rampant i was already watching movies pg pg 13 movies and probably now some ready dog movies um so so yeah so now i'm now i'm seeing a pornographic magazine now i'm at now now i'm able to see more body parts see on the on the cable i ain't get to them you know i haven't i didn't see when i say rated r i mean because of profanity i hadn't seen the nudity rated r yet now i'm seeing the nudity in a magazine and my 10 year old self is like oh my gosh this is these this is these things are in magazines who knew because i didn't know right i wasn't supposed to know but now my curiosity has heightened because of everything that already has happened to me okay i'm saying you understand what i'm saying so now i'm like oh wow so i am so intrigued in this magazine y'all i i read and I, I read all the way until i could hear my mom because um we lived in a in a house where it was just a uh the, the 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 level the first level and then the bait in the basement you see what i'm saying well i didn't have it upstairs so i could hear um when somebody come in the house and it was quiet when nobody in the house was in me so when my mom and my sister came back i hurried up and put the um magazine back where it was and um you know zipped it back up and went on about my business um, so again, like I said, the curiosity is now heightened and I began to, every chance I, excuse me, every chance I got that summer, it was still summer, remember? So I was, uh, um, my cousin had already visited and left. So, um, I'm home by myself. 
and um, when my mother's going to work during the week. And I'm, when I tell y'all every day, every chance I got, I flew down that basement and um, and read that magazine. And I read it and I read it and I read it. I, I read every page, every paragraph on every page, every cartoon or whatever it is that they put everything i mean it's it like almost like i literally it was, almost, it was almost like a book i memorized i kid you not i read it so much that the pages began to start coming out of the um what's that thing in the middle the staples and stuff like that and i started getting now i started getting scared because i was like oh my gosh if daddy knows that the magazine is like that he knows somebody's reading it now here's the thing i still to this day don't know if he forgot that it was in there or if he knew I was reading it and didn't care. I'm I'm promise you I don't I don't know. I can't put either on my father. I don't know. I don't know. I just know I was never reprimanded about it. I was I was and I was I was waiting. <laughs> like I was waiting uh, you know for the day that because I kept putting it back. It's like I didn't throw it away because I was scared if I threw it away, then they would see it in the trash can and then they would know. So it was just like, what do I do? I just kept putting it back. Joint was all wrinkled, us, <laughs> wrinkled up and stuff like that. Because I'm telling you, I read that thing from front to back. Like, man, listen, like it was a whole series, <laughs> but it was just one magazine. And uh, so, that, so now, okay, now that I've finished the magazine, it's, I need more. I need more. See what I'm saying? I I, I, mean, I was talking to my husband about this one day. We was I was explaining to him because I have a master's in social work, right? So I had I learned some stuff, okay? <laughs> some stuff academically, and I've learned stuff spiritually. God has confirmed. But so what happens is just like anything else, just like a um, drug, right? Just like with alcohol, it can become an addiction. You see what I'm saying? It starts out small. You know, let's say, for example, somebody uh, started out maybe smoking um, marijuana, right? Or, or let's let me go before that. Maybe somebody may start so smoking cigarettes or black and miles, and then they decided they wanted a little a little bit of extra high, so then they started throwing in weed in there, and then they they started smoking that a lot, and then that wasn't enough, and then they needed up wanting another extra high. And then they start smoking or snorting coke or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So that's what happens. You begin addicted. So the the seed of molestation was planted, right? That happened at six by the boy. Happened again by the girl. Now I'm seeing, oh, I was already in between that time looking at um, movies, right? So now I needed more. <clears throat> so now I see a dirty magazine. And that's not enough. Now I needed more. Now I needed to see... Um, and I think it might have been pictures like not just uh, with one person, but I think it might have been couples in there um, doing the do too because somehow, some way, I knew I wanted to see uh, films, the, por the, the actual pornography movies. Um, but I'm 10. How am I buying them in the store? right so i kid you all not this is when i all my stories are 100 percent true the this story i'm sharing today is in my memoir down at the the link will be in the description box below i kid you not i had this thought in my mind right and so i'm thinking like i want to see these movies but i can't buy and i used to talk to myself a lot too i can't buy them so what am i going to do what am i going to do one random day not long after i'm walking through my dining room and my dining room at the time my father used to have a briefcase that sat in the dining room against like the radiator or close by the radiator in the window I'm as I'm talking I'm picturing my house my old house in my mind and I used to see this briefcase I don't know how many times my little 10 year old self maybe even nine year old self walk by that briefcase it sat in the same place all the time i never pay when i tell you i ain't never paid no attention of like when i say pay attention i mean wanted to, or ever been curious or wanted to know what was in it until this day a random day but not really not really so random right the thought in my mind was i needed more i wanted to see more i see this briefcase there begins to be a voice. I hear a voice. The voice says, go over to the briefcase. 
I literally turned my because it was on it was on my left side. I'm walking straight, but the briefcase is to my left, and I it's, I'm telling y'all, it's like a movie, and like my face literally did like this. I kid you not, I kid you not, it's like it happened yesterday. And I walk over to the briefcase. I pull the briefcase. I sit on the floor, pull the briefcase in front of me, and I see the combination locks. I mean, this this is how I'm telling my age. Okay, they had the little combination locks in gold. It was three on each side, three on the left, three on the right. And I'm looking like, then I'm feeling defeated because I'm like, ain't no way I'm going to figure out the code to get in this briefcase. So I'm like, <sighs> I still don't know what's in it, but I know I was told to go to it, right? And part of me had a, had a, had a, um, a, a, a wish that it, ca it had what I was, what I was desiring, right? But Satan knew what I was desiring, right? And so um, I heard another, I heard a voice again. And the voice said, now y'all, <laughs> as God is my witness, how would I have ever known? The voice said, put in all zeros. How would I have known that? Come on now. Now you know, it's stuff, this stuff is real, okay? How would I have known that? Because I heard it. I heard him. I heard the enemy just like I could hear God. Clear as day. And I didn't know I could hear God when I was young. I didn't know it was God. But I'm talking about now. You know what I'm saying? I heard him say, put in all zero. Now, who else would have told me that? Right? So, I didn't even, even when I heard it, I was like, I think I said it to myself too. Matter of fact, it's in the book. I said, that ain't going to ain't that ain't gonna work. But I still put it in there. I put in all zeros. And I kid you not, I, I hit the right and I hit the left little clanks. And that joint opened up, popped, it, well, popped open. And when I opened it up, it was literally, again, like a movie. You know how um, when something happens in the movies and they do this, like, angelic type of sound or whatever. Now, what was going on was nothing angelic about what was going on. It was very much demonic. But it was like, it was likened until that. It was like a, ah. Oh, it was like that type of moment. I kid you not. Because the whole entire briefcase was filled with all VH tabs, VHF, VHS porno tapes when I was little we had tapes yeah we didn't have Netflix okay and um I thought my little 10 year old self had hit the jackpot I kid you not I was like and I knew they were my father's because this was his briefcase it was every it was some different kinds of you know ethnicities it wasn't just black people wasn't just white people i think it was some uh, asian people in there there was boy and boy there was girl and girl the only thing that wasn't in there was boy uh, um did i say boy and boy i'm sorry girl and boy girl and girl the only thing the only thing that wasn't in there was boy and boy thank god because you know, it's a little bit a little bit too much but nonetheless um i began to watch them privately I, I snuck and I, I had gotten so good at it back then they we had something called VCRs if this is somebody that's watching this that's a bit younger uh, and and the VCR will show you the time when you put a tape in you know the time where it is in the movie and so I started either writing it down or memorizing the time that I put it in so that I could put it back on the time when I um when I finished and I watched and I watched every every time I was alone, which was a lot, which was a lot. And I watched and I watched and I became addicted to watching those tapes. So much so, um, I, I kept going. And when we moved out of the house and got into a new house, I found out where he stashed them then. This time it wasn't even as, as, as private as the briefcase. My father had a literal drawer in his room down at the bottom this time I think I just found him I don't think it was an accident I found him I was looking and I found him what's wrong <laughs> I wish I could see my husband putting up the church finger so he can come in and put something in, in the glove box <laughs> so silly um yeah, I was looking for him this time because I was just like, I ain't see that briefcase no more. And I was like, oh, wait, there's not so many places he could have him. And it wasn't no lock. It wasn't nothing. It was just in the bottom of his um his dresser, the, the, the one with the four or five. It was in the bottom one. 
the whole drawer. And I think he might have added some. If I'm not mistaken, I think he might have added some. And so now I'm still watching in this house. And each year, each year, I'm getting older and older, all the way to high school. And I'm still watching, and I'm still watching, and I'm still watching, and I'm still watching, and I'm still watching. I'm still, watching, I'm still addicted. Um, and then one day, I was so full of disgust when I when I heard this one day. <laughs> May my father rest in heaven. He is dead and gone. So I'm, you know, I can snitch on him. <laughs> um, but one day. Uh, he 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 had started begin. He had a certain percentage, uh, where he started beginning a hard of hearing in a, in one of his ears, and so um, he wouldn't hear me all the time when I came home from school sometimes because if he was home already, if he beat me home from school because the TV would be he had to be the TV had to be at a certain volume so he could hear it. Y'all, one day I came in there and started up the steps and I heard uh, a porno. And my stomach just was like, oh. <laughs> I immediately began to throw up at the thought of him, you know what I'm saying, in there doing, you know what I'm saying, masturbating, I'm just going to say it. I just, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, it made me sick to my stomach. I ran up them steps so fast and shut my door. I don't know if he heard me or not, but I just, I was like, because my, my room was down the hall. So it was it was far enough away where I couldn't hear it. If I turn on like my music or something like that and block, you know. But I never forget that either. Um, even talking about it's like oh my god, so gross. But you think that made me stop that stop me? Um, mm -mm. and when I had to, my 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 parents wouldn't. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. They wouldn't allow me to have a TV in my bedroom yet. My own TV. I couldn't have it on my own TV in my bedroom. What was the point? I've been watching cable TV since I was like four or five years old on the regular TV. <laughs> but so when I would watch it, I would have to, um, when I was home by myself, I would even have to watch it in their room or, or take a tape and watch it downstairs in the family room. But it was like really, um, when I watched it downstairs in the family room, like I had to be really careful because I could hear, I could hear when the garage door went up or whatever, but I ain't, you know. I ain't, even, I ain't, I ain't want to take a chance of getting caught down there. So for the most part, I watched it upstairs. I didn't get a TV in my bedroom, I think, until I graduated from high school. I bought my own. <laughs> but it was, it was like, well, y'all could, y'all should have been let me have a TV. I'm literally looking at porn. Like, what? You scared of me looking at cable? <laughs> I had been. Um. But anyway, that's my story. That is how I became addicted to pornography. Um. So now, here's years later. Um, oh yeah, so I was talking to God about that when He wanted me to release this, and um, it's connected also to the masturb masturbation addiction. But that's going to be for another story time. I'm going to do another one for that one. I'm not going to um, put it on here; it'll be too long. But um, I stopped doing it when I got saved. But I got saved a couple times, right? Um, what I mean by that is God say, you know, went back in the world, God say, and so I stopped doing it and I, and I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, I'm not, because I'm, you know, um, saved now, you know, child of God, I'm going to church, I'm in the will of God, it'll just go away. Like the, the, um, the addiction will just go away. And that's what I was thinking, you know, no sorry it doesn't work like that you have to you have to close the door and then you have to um be delivered from it it just doesn't go away it's it's temp it's a temp it's let me let me say this it it's temporary the demons lie dormant you know what i'm saying but as soon as you open the door whether it's through masturbation again um if you get involved with somebody and then you you start having sex or something like that whatever the whatever door you could even watch you could even watch a movie uh with um a lot of sex in it, it may not be porn but with a lot of sex in it and get a desire again it's a door you know so you have to be delivered and you have to close the door to um to the demons that is the only way that is the only way the addiction will break um and so this didn't happen This actually didn't, the, my deliverance didn't happen until right here in my 40s. Um, but I stopped for a long time. I stopped for a long time in my 30s, about my 30s, yeah. Yep, my 30s. 
Um, I had dedicated my life back to Christ, but like I said, it just lies dormant. And then I opened the door. Sorry about that, y'all. It happened again, even though I'm in the car and my air was on low, my phone still um, overheat and with in the heat, overheated in the sun. Um, where was I? So you have to be um, delivered um, in order to break those curses. In order for, um, and then you have to close those doors. But yeah, um, I had, I was in my 30s and then I had stopped, you know, for a long time. But then I opened the door back, and this was, and this was um, after I got married too. And so I'm like, well, why did you need porn? It just, I opened the door. I didn't need it. I was bored. I, um, this was during the pandemic. My husband worked. My husband's at work. I worked too. I was at home, working from home. And was just bored in the middle of the day. One of my husband, but he wasn't there. And I was like, well, let me go on here and just, it just, and it was just one area that I like to look at. It was just, um, I, you know, that's not necessary to be, because I don't, I don't want to, uh, encourage somebody to, that's not free yet looking at this video and go check it out it was just one area of porn that i like to look at and um i was thinking i was like this ain't nothing let me just do this real quick open that door back up and um it wasn't until 2023 2023 where i was completely i, I, I got the full deliverance and closed the door you see what i'm saying so i want to encourage you if you are you know you older like when i say older i'm not older you know say if you're in your 40s or plus you know and you're still dealing with this that is the way that you have to go to deliverance and, and close the doors that's the only way that um you'll stop having an addiction you'll stop you gotta do it um but i, I also want to encourage you too this is what god was ministering me last night he wanted me to tell you all there's some of you who um I'm going to turn this back down because I feel like I'm yelling. Um, and I don't want to feel like I'm screaming at you. There are some of you who have this addiction. And you, like me, share a similar story. Where, um, you know, you the seed was planted some way, somehow. Or uh, you were molested, you were molested, violated, some type of way, right? R word. I don't want you to strike my... Um, something happened to you that you became uh, a lot of people you became promiscuous i was a, i had a promiscuous season as well um and i just want to let you know that the lord still loves you even as hard as you may think that that is because i know a lot of you deal with condemnation meaning the enemy puts words in a lot of your ears where you feel even like right after you do it did it because he did that he used to do that with me a lot right after it happens right because the addiction is like it's a likened to a drug so it's like you you do whatever you, i get it i get it y'all understand i had it for years you do whatever you got to do to get to that climax but once that high okay once that high comes down the enemy is now calling you nasty. He's calling you trifling. Those of you who are Christians, he's saying, look at you. You're not a real Christian. You're disgusting. What if you're, let's say you are a pastor or a first lady. What if your congregation knew what you were doing? What if your friends knew what you were doing? What if your spouse knew what you were doing? Like, he is so evil. And for those of you who are not believers, it's not, it's no different. He's your friend when you're sinning so it, it seems like he you went in with him when you're sinning i'm talking about satan right he your friend when you're sinning um he your friend when you out there clubbing and stuff like that but when you do that he talking real mean to you he real he don't sound like he a friend no more right that's because he hates you satan hates humanity <laughs> okay he don't care whether you in christ or not in christ he will use you up and spit you out that's what he does he is the father of lies his mission is to still kill and destroy that is in the word of god so he don't care who you are right he's going to still treat you like the scum of the earth because that's how he views you but guess what god don't view you like that listen to me there is no sin, and this is not condoning it, okay? I just want to explain to you how God feels about you. 
there's no sin that you could ever do that will take the love away from you that will take god's love away from you he loves you more than you will ever know he hates the sin but he loves you he is so in love with you that he wants you to be free from this he does not want you to have this hold on you he don't want you to be addicted to him i mean excuse me lord Double this lie. He don't want you to be. He wants you to be addicted to him, right? It's good to be addicted to God. He don't want you to be addicted to this stronghold. He does not want you to keep being bound by this. He doesn't want your 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 mind to be so warped now that you feel like um. It's a lot of you that feel like you are never. I hear you, Lord. It's a lot of you that feel like you'll never be able to stop this. I used to feel like that. You'll never be able to stop this. This is going to be with you for the rest of your life. Oh, well, I just might as well. Just, this, is, this is what I do. I watch pornography. I can't get rid of it. I masturbate. It's going to be with me for the rest of the life. For the rest of my life, the devil is a liar and so is his slew for grandmother. You can be delivered. You, 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 you want this real bad. And God wants it for you. So what will he do? He'll set you up. You can either go through self-deliverance, you can, God can connect you with somebody, he can connect you with the church, or he can just connect you with the community. There are people out here who work, who have deliverance ministries, who have, um, that's not even necessarily in a whole brick and mortar, I mean, I mean a church house, right? There are people, this person that did mine, she, me and my husband, she was not, uh, connected to a brick and mortar, a church house. God will connect you to whoever he can he 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 wh whoever he can you know what i'm saying I, I just want you to understand that it if he did it for me he can do it for you he loves you that much he don't want you to be bound by that satan wants you to be bound he wants you to think that it's gonna be happy for you the rest of you the rest of your life and then you're gonna get go to the hell and the leg of fire with him because that's what he want ultimately he want everybody to go to the leg of fire where he gonna he know where he going he wants you to go with him too but the devil is a whole entire liar you don't have to be bound by this. So I encourage you to pray to God. And ask God to help you with deliverance and closing these doors. He will help you. He will send somebody to help you. Or he will give you the tools to do it yourself. He will do that because that's how much he loves you. He wants you to be free. One of my favorite scriptures I quote it all the time. Because this is the, what the Lord had to minister to me. So that I can get it in my mind. Because I, like you, many of you, have went through it over and over. And over. Oh, oh, my God, I'm so trifling. I'm so trifling. But these are the words that the enemy was telling me. To the point where I was beginning to believe it. The devil is a liar. That's not how God thinks of you. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the flesh out of the spirit you don't have to be bound by this you don't have to be condemned by this you can be free and god wants you to be free and free indeed because he who the I'm, I'm chick, I'm de me on that. he who the sun sets free is free indeed so i encourage you today to pray to god you really want this to be done with ask god to help you ask god to free you and then while he's doing it guess what he gonna do he gonna love on you even more he gonna love you even more and I pray you fall in love with God and have a relationship with him there's no relationship like the relationship with the Holy Spirit he's no, he's like nobody I was in worship uh, this morning early this morning early hours of this morning and y'all it was one of them intense ones I mean I could not I had to ask God to help me because I was so overwhelmed in the worship Almost, I was choking, almost couldn't catch my breath, and I asked him to hold me, and he did just that. Calm me down. <laughs> but that's how overwhelming it is, because sometimes his love can get that way, but guess what? It's a good overwhelming. You don't want to be overwhelmed with love no more than the, than, than the Lord. I'm telling you, it's the best ever. And when I, before I went to, back to sleep, the peace of him, his presence, man, it was the best sleep ever. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's nothing like the love of God. It's nothing like him on this side, okay? So I hope this encourages you. And this is my story. If you want to uh, read this story and more, plenty more, 
please click the link at the bottom. You can either get my ebook or the paperback. I have both for you, okay? I have both options for you um, for my memoir, Cage Girl, okay? And um, I hope you enjoyed and come back. Come back because I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to release the story, the masturbation. Uh, yeah, how I got addicted to masturbation. Um, remember, God loves you, but I love you, but God loves you more. And remember, people receive when they can relate. I'll see you next time. Bye.